Hi, it's Solar and Equipment Review time. Thank you very much, Quick, for sending these in. We've got the Quick uh, TS11 soldering station here. It goes for a street price of about 80 Yankee bucks. Uh, and we've got the new model, Quick 861. Uh, you've seen me do a review of the older model of this. This is the 861 Pro. So take that sticker off. Don't need that. Um, and it's got some newfangled voice technology BS in it. Anyway, our uh, street price, I think, of around about 260 Yankee bucks. So let's check them out. Start with the quick TS11 soldering station here. As I said, 80 Yankee bucks, uh, and it's got a color LCD on it. We'll power it up later. And the iron it comes with, uh, it uses a removable uh, DIN connector here. So there you go. I haven't seen that one before. Is that uh, some sort of custom jobby? Um, it does lock in place, though, and you have to push that in to actually pull that out. So that's okay, I guess. But uh, here's the iron. It is really uh, quite small. It's reasonably lightweight. The cable feels like it is silicone. We'll do a burn test on the uh, cable, of course. Now, it says there's a range of tips available, and, well, here's the range. I'll put it up here. It's not much. Um, and they only gave me uh, three of them here. So I got a uh, standard point one, I got a bent point one, and I got a uh, angled uh, chisel here. So I didn't even get a standard chisel with the things. Anyway, anyway, these seem to be custom-designed uh, quick ones, um, so I'm not sure if they're compatible with anything else. If you know of anything else, available anyway and it does have an integrated uh, element inside the uh, tip there so it should be have decent thermal uh, performance on it but uh, yeah they're thin and kind of uh, I don't know they're a bit cheap they don't instill a lot of uh, confidence in me but the whole thing is only 80 Yankee bucks so you know what do you expect but obviously the range of tips they got, this is not designed for uh, any sort of like heavy duty uh, work. It's designed for like, you know, mobile phone repair or, you know, and other really uh, small SMD stuff. Hence the uh, size. And just as a comparison to my uh, JBC ones here, like they don't come in any like extra thickness uh, versions like here. And these are my uh, paste ones. They, of course, they come in the thinner one like this and uh, the extra thick uh, thermal capacity one. So, yeah, they don't have a lot of thermal capacity in them. Like that's just a physical bulk uh, thing. So and that's why like on this paste one, like you can choose different like thermal uh, capacity ones there. So, yeah, they're really designed for small uh, surface mount jobs. And it doesn't look like you can get one in like a uh, well based uh, tip like that for um, a solder dragging so uh, that's disappointing and there's no alignment on these so you can actually uh, turn them to any angle like that when you actually uh, insert them you're either going to like that or not it's neither here nor there. As for the stand here, um, it's weighty enough I don't mind the design but one huge thing missing where's the sponge? I want my solder sponge, damn it! I don't just want the wool, I want the sponge! Urgh. Anyway, uh, they've got a uh, silicone uh, thing up here. I find that sometimes, like especially like if you've got a real pointy tip, you, you go to put it in and you hit the side and it doesn't, it doesn't go in. Like, it doesn't... Uh, like, it's just... Yeah, it's... Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Um, it's overall, no, thumbs down. But apparently this handle does actually have a vibration sensor in it, so it knows when it's still like that. And uh, th there's advantages in that, in that you can have like an intelligent auto uh, power off. We'll try that out. QC passed, of course. So let's, uh, let's take this thing apart and see what she's got inside. All oh, this feels like a self-tapper. And we have a teardown. We have a big ass transformer in here. Uh, we've got insulated uh, connections there. This is all sleeved. It lo all looks all right. We've got a one meg resistor uh, going from mains earth over to here. Yeah, we've got a shake proof washer on the earth up there. And it looks like the earth is going over to the front. So the tip should be earthed, of course. We can measure that. And there's a PCB. Uh, what's a gee? A gee? <laughs> GI? I don't know. There's your switching element there. I'll put up the data sheet for that jobby. But apart from that, that's pretty much uh, all she wrote on the board. And well, that's all you need. No worries. There's the transform of those playing along at home. Gloria technology. Gloria. But unless I can't do my mathematics, um, 3 amps times 27 volts um, is not 90. And it's supposed to have a 90 watt rating. Uh... But that is an acceptable build quality for the price, I think. And oh, by the way, yes, the mains input uh, is uh, fused on the outside here. So, yeah, no worries. i tell you what, I do actually like the design of the rubber baby buggy bumper feet here. Um, how they've got the little protrusions inwards, which then um, keep 
the rubber in. Not bad. Let's check the tip to earth resistance there. 0.36, I zeroed that out, so no worries. All right, we'll do a first heat. Ah, uh, already, I haven't even used it, and the, the lack of a sponge is like, grrr. So let's switch it on, shall we? And beep, quick, TS1120. Whoa, that was quick heat to 350. Uh, I kind of like the orange there, and then the sort of like uh, turquoise different uh, preset colors. Geez, that's all right. Um, it looks like they've got a bar graph indicator over there. So let's try and just heat up something. Um, and I've got the largest tip which came with it, um, which was this. I don't know which ones actually come with it if you buy it, but they supplied me uh, three. So anyway, here we go. Let's try and heat up a ground plane at 350. And yeah, it's kind of doing it. And you can see over there, yeah, no. That's supposed to be a bar graph for power, right? Surely. Let me put some solder on that. There we go. Got our first smoke, but uh, where is... Where's all the power? Where's the power being delivered? I'm going into a ground plane. A massive ground plane with the biggest tip they've got. I, I don't get it. Surely that has to be a power indicator. What else would it be for? And after RTFM. Oh, yeah, that, that's annoying. I don't, this is hopeless. Yeah, sure enough, that bar graph is supposed to be a power display. So, I don't know. Anyway, I've had it sitting in there and it hasn't gone like into low power mode. So that sensor in there, maybe we have to set it up. Oh, what's, what's power? What's power button do? Nothing. Just beeps at me. Anyway, we can press, ah, oh, changes to green when you're changing it. I like that. I, I do like the display. The display is nice. Let's try 370. Undo a large copper ground plane. And it's, oh, it's barely doing it. It's barely doing it. It really can't deliver that energy. And there's like, look, look, what's going on? I can't, what? It just can't deliver the power. Wow, why bother having your 90 watts or 80 based on the transformer if you can't deliver it? I don't get it. Oh, the power button is literally a, power, a soft power button. So it's got hard and soft power buttons. You've got to hold it down to switch it on. That's handy because I hate having to reach around the back of a soldering iron. And my JBC one here does that. And it's really annoying. My uh, Pace has a switch on the front though. But there's really not much to it at all. I mean, set... There you go, we can swap through. That's pretty intuitive. I like that. So if we want to go to 400, presumably we just hold it down. Oh yeah, right. So you can set up channel one there and you can go like, yeah. Okay, so you can, you know, 303, <laughs> for example. Uh, and then we store that as channel one. How do we get back to the main menu? Presumably we just press power, do we? Yep, there we go, and it's 303. So you can set those. Yeah, so that works really well. I mean, you just select and it puts the bar over which one you're currently set to. I like that. User interface, thumbs up. The only small thing I'd say is I do prefer like a, an angled front, like I've got on the JBC and the Pace, because often you've got your eye and like right here in front of you and you're sort of like leaning over your bench, you can't see the display. So you'd have to have the unit, which is quite small by the way. I really do like the compact uh, nature of it. You'd have to set it back on the bench to be able to visually um, see that. So yeah, I just would have liked to have seen, you know, like a sloped front panel. I think that would have been more better, but eh, it's neither here nor there. And if we want to go to the settings menu, I do believe while they're there, we can just go like that. There you go, sound on off if you don't like the uh, beepies and the units, Celsius, and then you've got the Yankee uh, rubbish. Password, close, and close time, close. Okay, is that, uh, that is completely auto power off. Yeah, so close, I think, means power off. And if we go over here, sleep is on. And then we can go to sleep time, 10 minutes. There you go. So I'm going to set that to a minute just so I can experiment with that. Zero to 59 minutes. Nice. And I'll get back to you in a minute. See if it's uh, gone into, because I'm not touching the thing. It's got an accelerometer in the uh, handle. It should auto time out in a minute. And sure enough, it's gone into sleep mode. But what? What temperature is that? I want to know what temperature it goes to sleep at. That is that is ridiculous. Anyway, if I pick it up, 
Hello? Because it's supposed to have an accelerometer in it. Uh, See, I've got my Pace ADS 200 over here. I like the way that does it. It's in sleep mode at the moment, and it's got like 175, 180, right? It flashes the temperature as soon as I pick it up. Bam, we're uh, good to go again. But it's showing me what the temperature is, and it's indicating that it is in that uh, sleep uh, you know, like, like the standby temperature mode. The whole idea there is that the uh, life of your tip, if you keep running it at, you know, the soldering temperature, 20, you know, if you keep doing that for 10 hours a day or 20, <laughs> worse, you know, 24-7, um, then, yeah, you're going to shorten the life of your tip. The uh, plating on your tip is uh, going to last a lot less. Um, so that's why you have an auto temperature setback uh, feature on, you know, decent soldering stations. No, I checked the manual. I had it right the first time. Um, this thing has not switched off. The sleep mode is actually sleep and its sleep temperature is actually room temperature. It switches the element off. It doesn't just go to a lower temperature. So that means it's going to take longer to ramp back up. I, I don't like that at all. And as you saw, I was banging the stupid um, iron and it didn't work. All right, so it's back in sleep mode. Okay, presumably I can press the power button, but I don't want to have to do that. Oh, stupid. See, it gets caught. This stand is useless. Look. Hello. Hello. McFly. Anybody home? Turn on McFly. Come on. No. No, this is, it, it doesn't work. It's a complete fail. Wow. Should I even bother testing the rest of this turd? I pressed power to come out of sleep mode. It went back. It was at 370 instantly. So I don't... Here it is, right? It's sleeping. Okay. I pick up my iron. Hello. I mean, it's, <laughs> the sensor interface, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And look, I put that back and it's straight to 370 again. Okay. Let's measure the temperature accuracy. I've got it set to 370 there. Let's put some solder on here. And uh, 36, 370. Yep, yep, it's almost bang on. Nice. One thing you've probably noticed here is that this doesn't fluctuate at all. It's not displaying the actual soldering temperature. And I don't know why. I'm going to have to RTFM. Um, it's only showing the set temperature, which is useless. Why even have a display? Okay, let's do a basic thermal uh, capacity test here. I'm um, using the biggest uh, tip they actually uh, supplied. Um, they, they do make like one that's slightly bigger, but no thicker uh, thermal capacity one. So anyway, I've got it set to uh, 370 uh, degrees Celsius. So let's give it a go. And you can see, well, yeah, yeah, nah. Let's put some solder on there and it's, it's barely melting. You can see that's barely getting the job done there. Um, yeah, that's not good. I mean, this is, I mean, these small tips aren't really designed for this. So you'll probably see similar results with uh, the other iron. Um, so yeah, it's only really designed for like really small surface mount stuff. That's, you know, not big ground planes. We've got no chance of soldering like a TO220 like that. And that's the thing, like you don't even have the option of buying like a bigger, massive, wide thermal tip for it. So, I don't know, yeah, you can get slightly bigger, but you know, not huge like, you know, other uh, stations. And if I compare that to my uh, pace at 370 degrees Celsius with the smallest capacity thermal tip that I've actually got, a little conical jobby, um, and it doesn't have the extra, like the extra thermal capacity thing, and yeah, see, it's doing a similar job. So yeah, you can see how the small thermal capacity tip there, just it's just not going to do the business. And the pace with a higher capacity uh, thermal uh, chisel tip here, uh, let's try that once again at 370. Yeah, well, you've got to get that fresh solder on there, of course. And yeah, there we go. We start to melt that no problem. So yeah, it's just simply the thermal capacity of the tip. There's only so much you can do with a tiny thermal capacity. See, this have physically has a bigger thermal capacity on it. And we're actually going to be able to melt that TO220 there. So you've got no chance of doing anything decent with uh, this uh, TS11. You know, you ne just need a bigger capacity thermal tip. Just these bigger resistors here, I'm, I'm struggling, right? Struggling to even heat those up. No, I can do it. 
But yeah, the, the thermal capacity is just not really there. Even to do this package here is something that you'd expect a bench station to be able to do. And we can. Okay. Yeah, it's going to do that, but it's not going to do a lot more. Now if we get in there with our tiniest tip that we've got, the little uh, conical jobby. Yeah, okay, sure enough. But I'm feeling as though the thermal capacity just... If these tips is not great, there you go, I'm going to bridge those two together because they deserve to be. But I'm really just not feeling it. Once again, it's 370 set temperature, but I don't know what it's dipping down to because it's not going to bloody well show me. And I'm having a hard time just getting in there on a pad on an SO jobby. If I try that with the same tip, tiny conical on my pace, let's give it a go, shall we? Yeah, I feel as though, yeah, that's working a lot better on the pace. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the TS-11 just it doesn't seem to do the business. Doing a lead burn test here. And, yeah, no worries, passes that. Yep, it's proper silicone. It's not going to burn. No worries. Well, I'm not even going to do any more testing on this uh, TS-11. This is obviously a fail. It's one of the biggest fails I've seen in a commercial, like, proper, you know, uh, bench soldering iron. I mean, how many things can it fail at? It doesn't have decent high capacity tips, very small selection of tips. Okay, it's going to work as a soldering iron just to do, uh, you know, like small surface mount stuff. But if you have to do anything on even a decent sized uh, ground plane, um, then you're, you're absolutely buggered. It's got no live... Uh, display that's unforgivable right I do like the lead interface but that's probably the only thing about it and the build quality is decent but this stand is useless you don't even get a sponge and the stupid thing gets stuck all the time in here and and then the whiz bang sensory thing doesn't even bloody work in it I, what's the point what the hell are quick doing because quick are a a decent sized reputable company that specialize in soldering uh, soldering equipment so I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, this is a complete thumbs down. I don't know why you'd buy this thing. Um, there's so many other better um, bench soldering solutions available. Sure, it's low cost. Okay, maybe. But I, I don't know, without an com extensive comparison to other price, you know, in terms of value for money. But I, like, nothing on it works properly. I don't... Uh, no. No. Fail. Hello.